Okay, so the first thing we have to do is go to your computer, and I'm going to show you on a Windows-based operating system. Uh, Apple's a little bit different, sometimes a little bit easier, but also a little bit more frustrating at the same time. So uh, today we're just going to stick with Windows, and the first thing we have to do is get to our IP address settings. So first thing we want to do is go down here, click the Windows icon, and then just start typing CMD and that's going to bring up our command line and then what we're going to type in is IP config for our IP configuration and what we're after is these three numbers right here okay what we want to do is we want to write down each one of those because we're going to need those to enter into the copier itself depending on where you are in the country these numbers are going to be different so don't copy down mine um, but for the most part, what we're after is these last two digits on the IP address. These last two digits right here for me are 16. And that indicates that this computer is at the 16th location on the network. What we're going to have to do is actually change the last two digits on the copier to give it a specific place on the network. And what I always like to do is uh, just choose one that's quite a ways off from this because if you have multiple computers and multiple devices on your network, your modem or router is automatically going to assign them a particular place. So I don't want to interfere with any of the ones that are already there. So in my case, I'm going to choose 50. That's quite a uh, distance off from what my computer's at, and I really don't have that many computers on my network or devices on my network, so I should be pretty safe with dot .50. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the copier and transfer this information. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're on the main screen of the Toshiba, mm -hmm. and we're gonna hit user functions, and then we're gonna hit the admin tab, then we're gonna hit the password button, the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to hit OK. And then you see that the icons have changed and it gives us the network icon. So we're going to select that. Then we're going to select IPv4. And then first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that it's set to static so nothing changes. And then I'm going to highlight the IP address and change it to what I want it to be, which is 192.168.0.50. The subnet mask you can see is the same as what was on my computer and the gateway was also the same as what's on my computer. So we can just hit OK and apply now. And then you'll see down in the corner it says network initializing and that's good. That is, that's probably going to take about 30 to 60 seconds to configure and get up and running. So we'll wait for that. Here we are back at the computer and looking again at the command prompt with the IP configuration settings. Now if you wrote this down you could just close it and we don't need that anymore. Uh, otherwise just minimize it if you did not write those numbers down. But next thing we're going to do is click on the Windows icon in the lower left hand corner and depending on what type of Windows or what version of Windows you're using you can either hit the control panel button or just start typing control and then it will bring up the top program which is control panel and then what we're going to do is look under the hardware and sound heading for view devices and printers now if if your control panel looks something more like this just go up here to the upper right hand corner where it says view by and you have three different options you have category large icons and small icons I like the category, it just kind of simplifies everything, puts it into uh, groups rather than just listing everything. So we're going to hit view devices and printers. As you can see in the control panel it lists all the devices that are currently connected to this computer or this computer can talk to. Alright so option number one. The easiest way to do this is just to let Windows do everything for you and to do that just go up here and hit add printer say add network wireless or Bluetooth printer and it's gonna find everything on the network that is a potential printer as you can see it has found our Toshiba 4540 and but it's listing it twice one is an HTTP address which is which looks like a web address and then the other one is our IP address we always want to choose the one that has just the IP address uh, try not to choose the HTTP you may have some connection problems down the road so select that and then hit next and then it's going to ask you which driver you want to use and first thing we're going to go to manufacturer go down to Toshiba 
and then over here under printers, it's going to list a bunch of print drivers. Now the most important thing here is uh, the last two digits of the copier model. In our case, we're using a 4540, and you can kind of see it over here. Uh, this icon right here on mine is not supposed to be there, but uh, it's just taking a while to remove it. So, um, so basically, the last two digits tell you the generation year. Uh, so this is a 40 series model. And as we scroll down these uh, drivers, what we want to do is we want to look for a model that has a 40 series uh, digit at the back. And so as I scroll down, I don't see any 40 series drivers available in this list. Now you could do a Windows update, or if you have the actual driver disk, you can choose those options as well, but chances are you probably don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top again, and these top uh, four are going to be universal drivers that you can use. I always tend to choose the PS3 option. It tends to work better with a uh, majority of the types of documents and things that are going to be going through this copier. PS3 just seems to be be able to handle the most different variety. Uh, so I'm going to choose that and then I'm going to say next and then I'm going to say use the driver that is currently installed, recommended, or replace current driver. Let's just hit replace current driver in case I do have some some old drivers that are still installed on my computer. I just want to make sure that I'm getting uh, the most up-to-date one. So I'm going to say replace current and then hit next. Then you can rename the printer if you want. I'm just going to leave it as Toshiba eStudio. And then it's going to ask if you want to share this printer. Now this is kind of misleading in a sense because um, basically what, you, what you're saying is you do not want to share this printer by way of this computer, meaning you don't want other people to access this computer in order to print on the copier. Everybody else is going to have their own print drivers installed on their own computer so they can print directly to the copier. Uh, so I always leave this as do not share because I don't want it to be routed through my computer and then to the copier or printer in order to print. So it's kind of misleading, but uh, just hit do not share and then hit next. And then what you want to do, always print a test page, make sure it's working. And it's saying that it's been sent to the printer. And in the background, I can kind of hear the copier firing up, so that's good. We know that it's connected. And then I'm going to hit finish. And as you can see right here, it put Toshiba eStudio PS3. And that's going to be, the check mark means that it's the default printer. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and then go to printing preferences. And one thing I always tell my clients to do is click on this paper quality tab at the top. And the paper source and media are very, very important. Occasionally when you download these drivers or install these drivers, it switches this paper source to bypass tray. And for some reason, I don't know why, uh, basically it's saying that every print job or every copy job that it does, it's going to automatically try to uh, take the paper from the bypass tray rather than the paper drawers, which doesn't make any sense. So I always tell everybody, make sure that these are on auto and then make sure the media is on plain. And that's going to make sure that uh, the copier is choosing the correct drawer for the type of job that you're trying to get. Uh, and then lastly, you can here in here choose if you want the printer to default to black and white, meaning that if you send a color print to the copier, it's going to automatically do it in black and white instead of color. You can save a lot of money uh, with toner if you have some uh, people in your office that tend to print a lot in color and if it's not generally necessary I would just leave this on black and white but in my case I'm gonna leave it on color for now and then I'm gonna hit OK so that's option number one option number two a little bit more in-depth but first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this one the what we just put in okay the next thing we're gonna do is go back up just like we did before say add printer add network wireless printer but even though they show up up here occasionally it the computer will not be able to find the printer on the network so if you don't see anything up here what you can do is say the printer that I want isn't listed so I'm gonna click on that it's gonna take me to a new uh, menu and I wanna say add a printer using TCP IP address or host name click next and then it's gonna ask for the host name 
or I'm sorry, the IP address, which in our case is 192.168.0.50. Same thing we typed into the copier itself. And then you have this option here. You can query the printer and automatically select the driver to use, or if you leave this unchecked, it's going to take you to that uh, menu that we saw before where we had to select Toshiba, and then we had to select the individual driver that we wanted to use. I'm going to leave this checked because I'm going to leave it up to the computer and the copier to decide what needs to be done. So then I'm going to hit next, and this will take a couple seconds. You can see down here, now it says installing device driver software. Alright, so after about two or three minutes, this is the menu that came up. It says we've successfully added the Toshiba eStudio 4540. And once again, you can select uh, or rename this anything you want. Uh, in my case, I think I'm just going to delete those last digits there and just leave it as is. Now we're going to say, oh, and it says the printer has uh, been installed with the Toshiba Universal PS3 driver. So it's going to be very similar to the one that we did on uh, the first option, the first installation option. But I'm going to show you something that's slightly different. I'm going to hit next. Again, it's going to ask us if we want to share. I'm going to say no. And then print a test page. We'll do that. Click finish. All right, and then there we have it. We see the Toshiba eStudio 4540 that we just put in. And now again, I'm going to go into the printing preferences by hitting, uh, right-clicking it, going to print preferences. And then here you can see that this menu is much more in-depth than the one we saw before. Uh, again, I want to look at the paper source, make sure it's set to auto. The paper type, make sure it's set to plain. Uh, and here's some other things uh, that we can decide on what we want to do. Again, if we want to stick to black and white or color or auto, I'm going to leave it as auto in my case, but you can select uh, to black and white only. Then we can also go up here to the finishing tab where we can um, decide if we want to have two-sided printing as default or just one-sided if we want to set the number of pages per sheet, uh, all kinds of different things. And then if we also had a finisher on our machine, we can decide if we want to do staple, uh, different staple patterns, different hole punch or folding options. Uh, all this stuff is can be accessed right here as default settings. Uh, and then again, you have other options in here that you can look through. But the basic, the most important two, again, are the paper source, paper type, auto, and plain. I'm going to hit apply and then we will hit OK. All right, and there it is. And then we want to make sure we set that as default. Uh, there should be a little check mark here indicating that this is the default printer, but the check mark is there instead, so we'll just leave it as is. So that's option number two. All right, option number three. Uh, as you can see, this is still uh, showing up here, this little icon of the copier from the second uh, step that we took. Uh, but you can see that it's no longer the default. The brother has gone back to the default. Um, sometimes it takes a few power cycles for this to actually get removed. So don't worry about that. Uh, it doesn't even give me the option to remove it again because I've already done it once. So it's kind of in the process, in the background, going through and doing that uh, process. So after a while, that icon will be removed and there will be no problems. So anyway, option number three, this is probably the most technical of the three, um, but sometimes it's usually the one that I use the most often just because I know it's going to be installed correctly uh, just about every time. So first we're gonna do, click the Windows icon, and then we're gonna type in backslash, backslash, and then the IP address that it's set at. In our case, 192.168.0.50. Hit enter, and it brings up our folder menu. So Every single time we do this, at least this way, it's going to bring up these four folders. And as you can see, we have a PS3 driver, a universal driver, and an XPS driver. And then we also have this file share. I'm going to explain that later. But I always choose the PS3 driver and then click Setup. Windows is going to give us a warning saying, do you, are you sure you want to uh, run this? And I'm going to say yes. This is going to take uh, a few seconds to install. All right, we can see down here, Windows is giving us a message that the installation has been completed correctly. So we'll get rid of that. We'll close, actually, I'm gonna minimize this window. And then we can see that it's been the PS3 on MFP 192.168.0.50 and the check mark. So it has automatically set it as the default. Again, I'm gonna say right click printing preferences 
and now we have that same menu that we had on option number two that kind of has the more in-depth options. Again, check my paper source, check my paper type, make sure they're auto and plain, hit OK. We'll do a, whoops, go to printer properties. I'm going to say print test page. All right, test page has been sent to the printer. And then here also you can rename it to something else like Toshiba eStudio 4540, kind of like this one was before. It gives a little bit better uh, description rather than just the PS3 on MFP. So, all right, so I can actually hear the copier in the background so we know that that is working correctly. We'll hit OK. And don't worry about this icon. Uh, occasionally the icon will look a little bit similar to the copier, but sometimes it just gives this generic copier icon. That doesn't mean anything as long as uh, you know everything's working properly, everything is good to go. So there are your three options. Those are the three that I use most often. Uh, if you're just looking for a basic setup, I would say just let Windows do everything for you. Uh, if not, you can use option two or three if you need a little bit more uh, details, especially in those printing preference menus. Uh, use option two or three. And we're going to show you one more thing, and that's how to get the scan folder or get access to the scan folder to your Toshiba machines on all of your computers. So I'm going to close that. And then what I'm going to do is again go and click the Windows icon, hit backslash backslash, type in the IP address one more time, and it's going to bring up this uh, uh, folder menu again. So this is the reason that I choose this option number three most often when I'm installing these things, uh, because it right away it gives me access to the file share folder. So this file share folder is the folder that is on the copier that is a, is a shared scan folder. I always warn people that because this is a shared folder, every computer that's on the network can access these files and view these files. So if you're in an office situation where you're scanning, you're constantly scanning sensitive information, customer information, or even something like payroll that you don't want everybody to see, then I would recommend not using this. But for some offices, or most offices that I deal with at least, uh, the stuff that they're scanning is not sensitive um, and it doesn't